Welcome back to Modded by Bravo. I'm your host, Amy, joined with my co-host, Jenna. Jenna, what's up? How are you? How good. Are you? I'm good. How are you? What are good we talking about? Sure. Okay. Who's good? Uh, okay, good. Uh, we're talking, so there's quite a bit of Bravo, which is nice. I'm like, thank thank you, Bravo, because it's been slow this summer. And then we, I do want to talk about the It Let Ends With Us drama because okay. it is just on everything at all times, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I guess if you want to do your Olympic, you know, debrief, my least favorite part of the podcast, but, <laughs> but you know, maybe the listeners love it. So well, I, I can't be the know. only one watching. No, I, I couldn't. A lot of people what? No, no, not at all. I might be the only one not watching. Yeah, it's possible. Um, yeah. Well, where should we start? What do you think? Uh, do you just want to do, do you have anything that you really want to touch on that you're like dying to get to Olympic wise? I mean, I feel like the Olympics, like, you know, closing ceremony, I actually didn't get to watch. I was away this weekend. Didn't get to watch the closing ceremonies, but you know, my TikTok is dwindling down of Mm -hmm. Olympic, um, coverage. Uh, but I still have the favorites. I think the biggest thing that took hold of the Olympics the last few days has just been the break dancing. Um, and that is really just, you know, this chick from Australia, the memes were memeing. Um, she blew us all away with those breakdown skills. Break- Did she? It. <laughs> yeah. She it's blew us away. It's kind of nuts. Uh. Um, so yeah, it's been, I'm glad, like part of me is glad it's over because it was kind of taking over. And now I guess we're back to Bravo. I guess like things are about to heat off or kick off. You know, we've seen a lot of um, things happening and yeah, so we'll see. Cool. What else you got? All right. Well then let's just talk a little bit about, wait, what's the Jordan Childs drama though? Okay, so Jordan, this is, I'm sorry, yeah, this is the other thing. Jordan Charles is a gymnast, and we talked about this a little, I think, last week. Her and Simone were, so there were individual events, and her and Simone were competing on floor exercise. And originally, she came in fifth place behind two Romanian gymnasts who were tied for third place. Um, and you're allowed to challenge, like if you think of a football challenge, you're allowed Mm -hmm. to challenge the, um, judges and her coach decided to challenge the judges. The Romanian coaches didn't challenge the judges for the third place. Um, but they, Jordan's coach said, I want to challenge for her difficulty for this. And so they challenged the judges. The judges reversed her deduction. They said that she was out of bounds. And then I believe they reversed it. Hmm. Um, And which ended up giving her more points to give her third place. Um, I have a controversial opinion. Okay. I watched... I watched all of the floor routines Mm -hmm. and the Romanian gymnasts killed the floor routines. And I actually was surprised that Jordan got third place, even with the challenge Mm. Um, because there were little hiccups that she had like on her mount, like on her um, landings, there were a little bit, but you know, I'm not an Olympic judge. It was just from my opinion, from my experience, mm-hmm. just watching. Um, but what they did was they're now saying that now the Olympic committee is questioning whether or not she would have, she should have won third place. They are stripping her of her medal because they said that the challenge happened. You are uh, given one minute to challenge. Okay. And apparently she challenged within one, The her coach challenged within one minute and four seconds. Well, the Olympics, it's, like, so tedious when it comes to, like, these seconds and millisecond. Like, it's just so crazy. Mm. I mean, I guess when, like, everyone's so good at something, they have to figure out a way to. A hundred. Yeah. It's, it's, no one's ever been stripped of a medal other than the Russian athletes (sighs) for other reasons, but. That seems dicey. I know. It's a shame. Wow. Um, she a shame. made a statement that she's going to be offline for the foreseeable future. So, 
yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, I think the U.S. is also appealing the appeal, so we'll see what happens. It's a shame. That is you don't want shame. anyone to lose their medals, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, then let's get into some of the "It Ends with Us" drama. So. I have been trying to follow this. So a part of the issue for me in the beginning was like, I didn't read this book. Yeah, me neither. Uh, so I didn't really know what it was about. And I will say by the looks of the marketing and all of the PR that's being done, it's so flowery. I truly Would, thought it was a rom-com. A hundred. It also, yes. Yes. So then, so some of the backlash, I think that I'm seeing a little bit towards... Blake and I don't know that we should put it all on her, but like that no one has actually for the first part leg of like the promotions and stuff, no one has really been talking about it being about domestic violence. Yeah, I didn't know until yeah. the last few days. Yeah. And so she did actually, I think it was yesterday or last night, she posted something on her, I believe it was on her Instagram where it was like yeah. on the second slide, it was a bunch of information regarding like some statistics and I think like outreach programs. Um, so yeah, there was say, like, so then I started to see maybe part of, once I found out it was about domestic violence that they were sort of trying to pull, could this be a little bit of a marketing ploy about kind of like how everyone was speculating about the don't worry darling i mean it's definitely it's like giving those vibes different. yes giving like the dr internal drama vibes yeah and then people watch don't worry darling like i wouldn't have really watched it had i not heard all of that drama well, maybe i would have I, that was a good cast but regardless so they were saying like maybe this was intentional to keep justin out of it because people watching the movie would then they like the more you know about, I guess, Justin is like he's very actually involved with domestic, but like not that he's ever done it, but he's very like he works with a lot of organizations that help either like get funding for it or raise awareness about uh, domestic violence. And so him being this sort of like. What's the word I'm looking for, but it just advocate. It, yeah, ad exactly. Advocate for it with that kind of like make watching it a little bit like, oh, he's actually a good guy, but now we're supposed to like watch this movie and hate him. I, yeah. So then I dig a little deeper. Now, the thing that's, I spent a lot of time on Reddit about this. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. Yeah. So then, because I was just so curious because it just kept coming up on every single time I got online. I was like, okay, what is happening here? So then like they started to move. Now what I'm sort of seeing is like he and Blake had different, the, he, they had diff, like some creative differences. Now Ryan Reynolds, uh, Ryan Reynolds also, I guess, was pulled in and he. Well, like, they're producing it. Ryan Reynolds and Blake are producing it. Okay. And then Justin is the director and actor. Right. And so when Ryan and Blake are producing it, that means they're paying for it. Yes. So then you think they hired Him. Justin to do this, trusting that he was going to do the best job. Yeah. Because that's what I'm reading is like when it got to the editing part, they weren't seeing what they wanted. And sorry, you finish your thoughts and then I'll, cause I've seen a lot of these like TikTok people being like, oh, here's a clip of them on set. Look at their, they're having like heated word exchange. This is where we need our girl. It's me, uh, Jackie G, who does the lip reading. So I want to know what they're saying. Because nothing that I've seen from TikTok makes me read animosity. It's yeah, giving yeah. me like director actor vibes of just like, oh, is this how I do this? Or, oh, is this where you want me to, is this my cue there? It's and giving could, more. Some it's, of that just be them acting? A hundred percent. You know? Like, that's what I'm seeing from all of these, like, TikTok clips that they're showing where they're yeah. calling it animosity on set. It's literally a director yeah, yeah, directing. Director. <laughs> yeah. And so that's. That's like when I'm reading what's happening, I'm struggling. I read this review today and I wanted to read mm -hmm. it to you. Okay. Um, it's 
And it kind of just like, for me, I wonder, I want to hear what you thought about it. So Go it's on. kind of a, um, so this is a, a movie critic and he says, I'm going to spoil the end of the movie for you now because it's bad. So moral of the story is he's saying movie. it's a terrible movie. Okay. Blake plays Lily Blossom Bloom in quotes. I know a young woman who's on the verge of opening up her own flower shop. I know called Lily Blooms, which is stupid because Lily Blooms is right there. The movie switches between teen Lily, um, ably played by an underutilized Isabella Ferreira, poke, Porking her first love, who also happens to be unhoused, and adult Lily and her relationship with her husband, Ryle. Ryle is named thusly, presumably, because he gets riled up easily over nothing. Much of the movie is about him physically losing his wife because he burns some eggs or because he's jealous over the guy she dated when she was in high school. If it sounds like I'm being dismissive about domestic abuse, I guarantee you I'm not. This movie is largely detached from reality. Oh, wow. Okay, so then this brings us back because I guess ultimately they did go with Blake's version is what I'm gathering. Yeah. And so, and like, I think I even read somewhere online that like actually, okay, so they they screen tested with two different audiences or with the, yeah, with the yeah, audience, yeah, yeah, with yeah. two different versions. And they, from yeah. what I've read is that the audience actually did test better with Justin's. Yeah. But Ryan and Blake have, final say and frankly more pool in the industry and like they're gonna i mean they having hugh jackman at the premiere felt like such a distraction from like what was going on and that just goes to show like kind of the the, the heavy hitters that they can pull to get people talking about the movie and so it's almost like was that part of like is that why their version won because if without them winning do they pull all these strings to get their famous pe friends to talk about it and be at the premiere? I feel like the, uh, what's going on in this probably goes on in almost every movie and whether or not there's drama or not. The reason their version one is because they're paying for it. Yeah. Like it show me the money. Like this is the industry that it's in. If you're paying yeah. for it, you're going to get the final say. Like, I think, I think, I just feel you like people even if his if Justin's tested better though that's still I also if you look at Justin's like let's be realistic Justin's okay. history of movie making and directing uh -huh. and acting compared to Blake and Ryan mm -hmm. it might have tested better with one audience but if you're paying for it ultimately you get the ultimate say and it's just yeah. sometimes it's sh that's why Hollywood money talks well, I think I Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, you go. I guess the other thing that's so interesting about this whole thing is how how all the people in the film and other people that he's even surrounded himself with before have really distanced themselves. Justin. And so like yeah, and from him. Like there's been like Jenny Slate was in an interview and completely dodged the question about him. He there's been no tag he hasn't been tagged in anything. He hasn't been mentioned in anything. Any interview questions regarding him have been glossed over um then like even colleen hoover who is the author of the book i guess had like a really good relationship with him and was really excited that he would be directing and acting in it and she has no mention of him and she hasn't tagged him liz plank who does the the sync podcast with uh, monica padman under the arm tracks for umbrella they i guess were also really good friends she went to the premiere no tag like it's just it's so bizarre and it's, you know, at first you want to go, like my brain before I found out more about him went to like, was he care like some like toxic masculinity kind of shit. Mm. But like the more I read about him, the less I think that and the more I'm, I, I think also the fact that I'm not a Ryan, Ryan Reynolds fan, I think yeah. that he's, I find him so obnoxious and I think he completely ruined Welcome to Wrexham. So I have my own bin oh. to pick with him. Yeah. Everything does not need to be a bit when it's like, you're talking <laughs> about uh, looking at you, aim. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it we really just like, like everything he does is a bit. So he annoys me. And then we have like a friend, a personal friend who had a terrible, terrible story with him. So that just like adds fuel to my fire. But yeah, so this whole thing is just, 
It's a mess, I just, but people are talking about it. That's what yeah, and I, I for for me, I just feel like there's a piece of the puzzle missing. Like mm -hmm. obviously, like something's not being said, and it was the same with "Don't worry, darling." And if anything, the same thing it did for me with "Don't worry, darling." Like never saw the movie, just not interested. Like it, it mm -hmm. tainted it for me, and. Oh, okay. For me, I read that review. It doesn't look interesting to me. It looks so cheesy. Yeah. Um, and it's unfortunate because if it is about domestic violence, from what this review is saying, they did a mm -hmm. terrible job on a topic that could really use some coverage right now. And mm -hmm. if they're not representing it properly and, you know, hopefully that this is – hopefully it does its job of getting, you know, more folks – to talk about it, but we're talking about the wrong thing. If this is what the movie is mm -hmm. supposed to be about, you know? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I really think it's, I think that's what probably Justin is frustrated with. Fair. He's I, mean, fair. Said, like, I think that they had talked about like a sequel or something. And I don't know if the book for that is already written, but he says like, Blake would be great for directing that. Like, He's not saying anything negative, but he's definitely like, he's done with this project and that's that. And even like as an actor, this is, you are at sometimes after projects, it's just creative differences are such a nice way to say that. Your idea just, sucks. <laughs> it, and like, yeah. And we just don't work well together. Like we don't have the yeah. same vision, you know, yeah. actors have very strong opinions. Directors yeah. have very strong opinions. Yeah. All like everyone involved, you know, I just think like you bring someone on as a director because you trust them with mm -hmm. their vision. And so there had to have been a disconnect there if that's what everyone's talking about. Yeah. I, yeah, I think you're right. When you said something earlier about you think it came down to in the editing room, sort of, because yeah. it did seem fine up until the end. Right. Which would be the editing, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and money's money's gonna talk, and it just is how many bad movies we've seen because Pete because money was talking. Yeah, so it's true. So you true. Know? Yeah, unless if you get you... like the names attached to it, right? It's like you can make a shitty movie. Yeah, always. I mean, yeah. follow them. Right. I mean, we've seen like Gili. Like you think about Ben and Jen back then. How like I mean, there's a million movies. I don't. Yeah, I just yeah, use yeah. that as like my first yeah. example. But there's a million movies where the concept was there. Even watching Entourage back, how many things get lost and just sold to to companies and sold to yeah. studios because they have a great story, but then they're never made because people don't want to buy it or people don't want to back it or they can't get the right actor in place. Like it's, it's so much politicking that happens yeah. after the script that, you know, that was of course, Ryan. Movie. Yeah. And of course, Ryan and Blake are going to win compared to yeah. Justin. Oh, who's sure. still not up and coming, but ultimately compared to them. Yes. Yeah, especially because they're like, I mean, they're literally A-listers. They're, they're and they're so close with Taylor Swift, and sh no one's having a bigger <laughs> year moment time than Taylor Swift. <laughs> and Taylor Swift, we didn't even talk about that. All right, well, okay, let's get in. Are you good to drop it there? I guess. Are you? I would love to know, yeah, I would love to know what the missing piece is, but I think we've, I think we've solved it. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever like. No one's ever going to no. come out and say like. I don't think his direct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, then let's get into Bravo. Oh, God. Oh, wait, but what about the Love Island taping? It's taping it's tonight. Now. It's literally like happening right now. Yeah, it's really happening right now. Um, All the girls went to see Ariana in Chicago last night. Yeah. Kaylor and Aaron are donezo. Done so. Like she said that she needs a revenge look for the reunion. She gives zero Fs. The thing is, so he doesn't either. He doesn't really care. No, 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 no. I, I don't like, think he cares. For, I, I mean, he might care for like today or tomorrow, but then. She could come out naked and he could pretend that he cares. He doesn't care. No, he, no, he really, I, I agree with that statement. He, I don't think he cares, especially, but you asked me this yesterday. Kind of a shame. That, it is like, a shame. He is going to put in this effort thinking like she's going to come out 
looking like a smoke show and it's like, yes, do that, but it's don't do it for him because it's, no. it's gonna, it's not going to move the needle for him. No. And seeing all, like, I've been watching a lot of Miguel's TikToks and he surprised mm -hmm. Leah in LA for her cute. birthday. That was so cute. I'm really enjoying watching them. Yeah. Um, the love Island stuff's dying down a little bit, but don't you worry because there's more to come. There was just literally right five minutes ago, my sister-in-law texted me and was like, FYI, biggest Love Island UK news just dropped. Molly May and Tommy Fury have called it quits. You don't know what that means, but for but any of our, but you will, for any of our listeners, they were kind of this like Love Island power Hot couple, oh, okay. like power couple have been together for five years, were engaged, had a baby together and they just called it oh, quits. No. Like, I got the notification at 1245 and we start recording at one. So big, that's a big bombshell that just happened. Um, the other but, thing, yeah. why did Kane fly oh. in for the reunion, but then leave? Okay. So he put some messy TikToks up that were borderline racist. Oh, so when this was, when he got to New York, when he got to New York with Aaron, Oh God, what is it? It's, he, it was very embarrassing what for him. Talking? You can find it. It's basically like him trying to use chopsticks saying, I can't believe anybody would know how to use these. Talking oh, a God. lot. I know. Talking mad ish. And Aaron's in the background giggling. And oh, they're just God. two Jeez, stupid 20 something year old boys. He has such a big fat mouth that you know what? Set consequences yeah, actions consequences. and words have consequences and yeah you i'm sure there's yeah. more i can't remember the exact tiktok i saw it like in passing and people were commenting like this is this is problematic and aaron's in the background like <laughs> i don't think nicole is gonna go yeah there's been no sighting of her mm. i don't yeah. think she's going i think yeah. she's like that's i a guess we'll find this. out yeah yeah and then there's Serena and Cordell who are doing all the TikToks in Midtown that their little hearts could desire. I know. I think he really did get a cheese and sponsor ad. So that's good. Good. We love that for him. <laughs> I know. You would ask me so yesterday, <laughs> like seeing them at the freaking Carmines in Times oh, Square. Like I can't. I can't explain. There are 1 million restaurants in New York City to go to. And they're Feel going like to like the tourist traps. I feel like they're doing it unironically too. Like, yeah, when we, like when we were in yeah. Italy, like our last meal was at the Hard Rock Cafe Rome, and like, oh, oh my, really? Yeah. I have such hysterical memories from there because they, when I, I lived in Rome, so <laughs> it was when I lived in Rome. They had sour cream and pickles, and we would go there when we wanted a cheeseburger or something with sour cream or pickles, cause you couldn't get it anywhere. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah. Ironically. Yeah. Like we were, like we were not going like, mm -mm. Oh, like, so excited. like actually my, one of my friends <laughs> five minutes after she ate, she's outside throwing up. And I'm yeah. like, this is, I felt like shit. We, it was like a terrible experience. Yeah. But, you know, I guess we just needed it. That We were like ready for America. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it happens. Yeah, but they are doing it dead, like dead ass serious. I yeah, I think. Also funny. Speaking of Love Island, though, so we obviously stand Ariana. She's a fucking oh. queen. Oh. But I have like today. I was like, oh, she was on Watch What Happens Live last night. So I was she like, let me try. She looks obviously amazing, but like, so good. She, like, I was like, oh, I should watch it before we record today. And then I had this like immediate second thought that was like, I mean, she's not going to spill anything anyway. Like she is so, mm -hmm. she's almost like Kardashian trained when it comes to being on Watch What Happens Live, where like she'll, she'll do enough to be on the show, but you're never getting any big sound bites or anything. Like there's nothing, she plays it so professional and polite that it's almost like, ah, give me a little bit more. But I think also that's just who, like, 
to me, that's, that's how is. genuine she is. She like, yeah. she was asked about Sheena and Andy's like, is it fair to say that your relationship took a hit? And yeah. she's like, that's fair to say. Yeah. She's like, but there will always be love there. And mm -hmm. we've talked a few times and like, she just does it so respectfully where you have blah, blah and Sheena coming out with their big fat mouths saying whatever the hell they want, whenever the hell they want just like trying to down her at any second. And to me, it's like when they go low, she goes high and she just has continued mm -hmm. to do yeah. that. And like, yeah, we know the Kardashians are media trained Ariana. Yeah. To me, it's like, it's this is just who she is. is. Yeah. yeah. Like not talking ish, just kind of, yeah. She did this campaign with the Rockettes or this TikTok yeah, with the Rockettes. And I'm like, is, she, is this next? I would die. It's, it's next. Like you they're not going to yeah because, okay. Even if it wasn't before, like maybe it was just, they were going to do it, but then they post it on social media and they see the response and it's like, okay, then I guess we're doing this because if she's going to be a powerhouse and bring in all this money that they brought back Chicago this quickly, she has the, it's the first time the USA has ever, or, uh, Love Island USA has ever had like that kind of attention. Oh. It was the most streamed show on across all streaming platforms for over two weeks. That's insane. Across all platforms, not just Peacock, <laughs> not just a few of them, all of them. Yeah, so that's it's insane. Like what we're going like going right back to you know what we we're talking about with Hollywood, and it ends with us. Money talks. If she's the face that's going to bring money, they're going to go for it. I, because you know, something's coming down the pike and you're wondering what it's going to be. And at the end of August is, is, is Chicago is going to be up. And I mean, she could ride out that Chicago wave. People have been showing up for her every yeah. night. There's people every What's night. The pay for that? Like, do they get paid? A hundred percent. I mean, I don't know what okay. they get paid. I, Broadway actors, you know, they're not making as much as what That's Ariana what is going to be making. Okay. Or like the leads, the chorus yeah. is going to make a lot different than what Ariana is going to make. But I mean, I guess I knew they were getting paid, but I was, I guess my question was, are they getting paid? Like, is she I'm sure she has like a pretty nice contract. I'm sure that second contract was even nicer because they're asking yeah. her to come back. And like, she, she's filling the seats. Chicago is like one of the longest running Broadway shows and she's been selling it out. I think they said last November it was the first time it sold out so consecutively in like an amount of time that it hadn't been in years and years. It's just one of those ones that it's such a good watch. It's a, yeah. like an easy watch. Everyone gets it. You don't need like backstory. You don't need to love Broadway. It's it's got all of the Broadway elements. And oh, she just what I hope she doesn't it. do is this might be an unpopular opinion. I don't want her to do like acting acting like sitcom acting i think it could tarnish what she's doing now i think people are taking her so seriously in the roles that she's doing that i think if we saw her on like a sitcom it would like cheapen her a little bit like i know she did that lifetime movie and like i, I think even that think she's do... i even Go think ahead. she's past the lifetime movie that's what i'm ho i i like really don't want her to do that just for the sake of like acting yeah, I mean, she is a trained actor, yeah. theater actor. I wonder what she would want next. I mean, the hosting thing to be in Fiji. She was asked on Watch What Happens Live about the, was she okay, taken? Uh, no, she was asked about the lawsuit from Tom Sandoval and if she really mm -hmm. believed if Tom didn't know about it. And she said, I don't know. And she basically you know, kept that to the chest. And Andy said, how did you feel about that? And she said it was a really bad day. I bet it was. And and it's like, you're still being tortured by this POS yeah. that did you dirty while you're trying to move on with your life. Well, still. this is a perfect segue into just yeah. a little bit more VPR stuff. Uh, so I guess on a higher note, oh. Stassi signed a contract, I guess, with Hulu. Get so it, girl. Good for her. I know. I guess we, I guess everyone saw that coming at some point, right? I guess. I think that she was, because she's always like in interviews, she said she didn't want to do Vanderpump Rules and The Valley. It seemed like she kind of is pulling a Kristen Cavallari where she's mm. down to do the reality TV on her as she, she has to be a producer. She needs to be, have final say. Like 
she wants to be able to control the narrative, which I think if you have that much power, like, then yeah, you should. And I think with the Vanderpump Villas, I think that was a plea from Lisa Vanderpump saying, please, Sassy, I'll give you anything you want. I need you to come because the ratings <laughs> are trash. And I love, I, I immediately have this like, image of Stassi sitting at Sir in that green dress, her hair super blonde, <laughs> kind of apologizing and like begging Lisa for forgiveness. And, and the tables like, have turned. Yes. And, I love that. I love that, I love even, that like, vision. Yeah. And I'm not even like a Stassi You're not. fan. No. I love this for her. That's interesting. Like she you know, with everything that had happened, I think she took the time to kind of learn and figure out, you know, after everything that had happened with Faith, I feel like she, um, you know, they're giving Jax uh, uh, the time to evolve. I feel like then Stassi definitely is owed that too. And if there's any one person out of that cast that can carry a show on her own, it's going to be Stassi Schroeder. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, I'm, I'm going to be watching, obviously. I'll be, I mean, to, I actually like Bo quite a bit. Me? He's so level-headed. I like how kind of like normal he yeah. feels to me. And yeah. just, I also am just like, hell yeah, man. You like, I, I, it makes me, <laughs> this is so fucking corny, but like, <laughs> I like how you can see that there's like no, he doesn't feel like emasculated by her at all. I think he's so proud of her success. And I love that for them. Like, I, I don't know that ever anyone can just sort of be, like, kind of be in the background, especially to someone as big as Stassi. Yeah. And he seems to do it so seamlessly. And I think just, I don't even think he's trying. I think this, he's just, like, That's genuinely, who he is. like, yeah, like, this is my, this is my girl. Like, fuck yeah, let's ride. I, I couldn't agree with that more. And we saw that in the few seasons that he was in. Um, and that's why I think it's going to be a success. Like he lets her mm -hmm. sit on the throne. He mm -hmm. does her thing, but I think it's one of those relationships where we know that he, I always say this about me and my husband that he, I like to look like I'm wearing the pants on the outside, but realistically we all know that he wears the pants, but mm -hmm. I need to have the perception that I'm wearing the pants <laughs> Interesting for my own. Huh. Anyway. Yes. So I'm excited for that. I think that'll be good. That'll be a good one. Um, okay, so Brittany and Kristen blowing. Did you see this? I know you were down the shore Wait, all weekend. What? So they blew up Jack. Oh, spot. yes. This was. Oh, was it? Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's okay. I Sorry, bro. Jack. Jack will get you riled up. I um, can't. So he's on. So for anyone who hasn't seen, Jack's basically was on his. I guess like Instagram live, but I'm like, when? Because aren't you in like a facility? where you probably can't have a phone, whatever. I guess the details don't matter here. The point is, I know. The point is, is that he was on there saying like, I'm on Cameo, like I'm donating this money to, <laughs> I think it was a cancer. I hope it wasn't cancer. Was it cancer? Oh, probably. I bet you uh, did it in honor of his dad or something. Yeah, well, that makes it even darker. Sicko. So then Brittany, who... I was like kind of shocked by this. But Good. She goes out and puts him on blast and is like, you're a liar. That's not where this money is going. And then Kristen doubles that, doubles that down and reposts, I think, even what Brittany put out. I'm like, okay. So I Kristen think. Kristen loves to get in on it. Kristen I know. loves to get in on it. It's like, I feel like because Brittany has apparently, I were like, it's there's deep. a new guy in her life. Good. Yes. Good. And I uh, think uh, now uh. that she's, Getting some new D, that veil Good. that started to be lifted is like, it's just like out of the way now. Good. And so she's like, she's, all, I feel like she's in that place where she's only seeing the bad. You Good. know what I'm talking about? Though? Yes, like how of course. Like we've all been there where like, oh, like everything you do now triggers me. And I think you're terrible. And I think Good. that that's where she's at. And I, yeah, good for her. We need that for her more than cool. anything yeah, go ahead. What I'm dying to know is Jax's response. Just, I would well, be like, afraid of the text messages coming in from him because he's so unhinged. 
Well, we're going to probably watch this play out on the Valley next season because they are taping right now. And it was, it had to be taken down. And I'm like, did it have to be taken down? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. It was taken down from her account because I was posting on our social. And by the time I went to post it, it was already taken down. Yeah. Yep. 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 So interesting. I wonder if her lawyer maybe told her like, Hey, this won't be good for court. Um, The kid and stuff. The things but, I mean, that, ja- yeah, yeah, the things so, that yeah, Jax has I mean, done and said. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of all of the VPR, Peter was on a podcast saying that, and we just saw this a few weeks ago when we were we in did. LA. And we and pointed we were, it out, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We're like, why? So apparently TomTom Tom is being rebranded as Pump. And if you go to TomTom, Tom, you'll see that the Pump sign is there and the TomTom Tom sign is there. And so Peter speculated that, Lisa has already brought bought out the Toms for their share of Tom Tom. So I believe that. How is Tom Sandoval making money right now? Dude, I have no idea. Honestly, like trying to get out um, Ariana's. I have no idea how he's making yeah. money right now. Yeah. So, yeah, but I totally believe that. I don't think Peter would really buy. I mean, I thought we there's been so much conversation over the years about her buying them out. So she always presented yeah. it in a way to help them. But yeah. I think that she's wanted to buy them out for some time now. I mean, rightfully so. Yeah. Also, how well is that place actually doing? I want. I would love to see Which their one? under day numbers. Tom Tom. Or even like he said that oh. Schwartz and Sandy's is a ghost town. We were there. We were there. But we were there right after we were, Scandaball. Yeah, at the height of everything. Yeah, we were like what two months after yeah you're right yeah. but it's not like it's going to recover from that he also said lala and sheena are filming with the valley so it's like uh, okay, did, i know did bravo not read the uh, like one million comments online begging them to not do this that's my face i can't even make a face about it because people i don't want to see on my screen Oh, come on. Get rid of them. We're over it. We and and they did it. such a great thing. We were in yeah. the valley. We were liking the valley. We were yeah. watching the valley. We're here for the valley. We want to see what's happening on the valley. I don't want to. I don't care for this. Neither at all. Um, um, which brings okay. us to other people that I don't want to see doing weird Thanks. things. Shit. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle Cook. Cook. Kyle Cook was apparently out in Long Island last weekend playing a DJ set at a bar. And actually, Tom Schwartz is supposed to make a cameo in this episode because he was out there for Schwartz's, um, for Schwartz's, no, for Kyle's set. He like, and he was like at some Patron event I saw on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I restarted Summer House. Okay. Finally. Where are Kyle you? Kyle and Carl, I'm only on episode two. Kyle and Carl from the jump. So problematic. Trash. I don't think I remember them being this terrible. <laughs> I cannot wait till you get to like, the season with Hannah and quarantine where I just, and I know I've talked about this so many times, but I cannot yeah, yeah. wait until you get to that because she was villainized. And when you what? watch to see what Car- what Kyle does, and even Amanda was a little, Amanda was not nice to Hannah yes, in those episodes no, at all. Yeah. Like I'm looking back and I'm trying to remember like my feelings originally when I watched it and I did the math and I was, I think 26 mm-hmm. when the show started. Yeah. So I was a little younger and a little dumber and not as like all wait to the like the toxic masculinity stuff. And I think but conversations it, I think conversations okay. yeah. Yeah. And so watching it at 34, I'll be 35 in two months, it's like a totally different lens that I I'm like, oh my God, I cannot even tolerate this. I know. It's it's just sweet. Did you see the blind about this party, by the way? This DJ said. Yeah, where they said that blind. Kyle went on late. Um, that the, the thing that the thing that really was wild for me was watching all of the TikToks and social of Amanda just hyping him up on the side. This I is your bummed. 
Me too. Like this is your 40 something year old who's going through a midlife crisis DJing and you're hyping him up when he couldn't even get like everything that happened last year. He couldn't even hype you up to get you to do a brand deal. Although we did see her free people ad and I hope there's more of that coming. You Um, could literally wear anything she wears. I just think you should just take style advice from her. You have, I agree. I, I like her style. Her yeah. Style you could pull style. all of it off. Uh, thank you. I do want to just, we didn't really say what the blind was before. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Thursday. That's okay. Just so anyone like listening. So the blind basically said that DJ, the DJ event was supposed to, I think be from one to seven or two to seven, something like that. He didn't come on till six 30. At that point, people had left. I think it was a paid event too. Mm. And don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it was a ticketed event. So that means people paid money to go see them. Probably also a little bit of the hopes of like meeting the cast and maybe being on TV, who knows. But then, yeah, so didn't go on until way later. And then on top of that, in that in that same blind, they were saying that they're, they were like giving out free lover boys and people weren't even drinking the free ones. Oh, really? Where was this blind? Because I saw a different one. I think it was on, I think it was Dumois. Okay. I not Bravo I saw... Cocktails. Okay. Which I normally, saw... Dumois doesn't post a ton of Bravo. I feel like yeah, yeah. Bravo stuff ends up going through Bravo and Cocktails. Yeah. That's interesting. I saw something a little different. Um, what did you say? Just that it was five. He was supposed to go on at 530. He went on at six. They were giving free lover boy. Lindsay was really great. Carl wasn't. No one cared about West second season slump. No, um, <laughs> see this one. I, I saw one see about, it too. I've seen like Lindsay getting some good publicity. I don't know if she's doing yeah. it herself, but everyone's saying that she's like a really pleasant pregnant lady. I guess if is it something she's it's everything you've ever wanted. wanted. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. the time to be happy. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'm you know, we love Summer House. It's fun to hear the gossip before we're gonna mm-hmm. watch in the new year. So what are we gonna do next? So see your New Jersey. Okay, so it depends on how you want to do it. So Jersey, we can like run through either now or what? just save it. Run as, through. Uh, all right, fine. You you and you're right running now. through. I hate, I hate Jersey. I hate Jen Aiden and Teresa. They make it such a miserable experience. I can't. Go ahead. Okay, what do you want to do? We could do right, Jersey let's... and not run through it, or we could do OC. Let's just do it. Let's do OC. Okay. We'll just go in order because OC was before Jersey. Technically. It's so funny that you, so you and me always talk about, I know Jersey is very a lot for you, but yeah. I don't get how OC <laughs> after this episode wasn't a lot for you. I don't know either. When you said that in a text last night to me, I was just about to do my rewatch and it didn't get me as like, rile- I think Maybe it's because I know Tamara's such a joke that yeah. it doesn't like. They're like, also me, not as aggressive. And I think because Tamara is doing a lot of it, although it's so mean spirit, spirited, I, I don't. There's something about Tamara doing it that feels so like for the cameras and acting and that like we know that she knows that we know. Whereas Jen Aiden and Teresa this is who they are. Like, but see, they're not me, doing it for the show. This is just at their core who they are, especially Jen Aiden. Like, Jen Aiden, I wonder what Teresa's direct directory would have looked like had Jen Aiden not come on the show. Teresa could have done this all by herself. She doesn't need Jen Aiden to do this with her. Give me not a break. Do it, but I wonder if she would have had any, like, I don't know. I, the thing that, I that's weird to me is Tamara fakes being friends with these people. Whereas at least Jen Aiden and Teresa aren't even faking it. The sick yeah. thing to me is let, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. Okay. So we're going to, we're doing OC. Let's do OC. Lexi. Why talk about it? Lexi? Ew. I Lexi. I liked when Tamara called her Jesus jugs better. Yeah. Um, I wonder, I do want to just start like by asking the question, do you think Bravo, Lexi or Tamara had any idea how like 
what the audience, how the audience was going to respond to this season. Because to me, it feels like they thought that they were going to be hundred percent. No, 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 go ahead. And I, Okay. Like, I think that they thought they were going to be like the heroes of the season. Absolutely. And that is just like, I would not happening. See, no, I would love to see their kind of their inner monologue happening now that yeah. everyone's like, y'all are crazy. All of a sudden we're like the memes about being like, well, I can't believe I'm riding so hard for Shannon. I think that's how we feel. A hundred percent. And watching last night's episode or not last night. I watched it last night, last week's episode. I felt that even more so I can't believe how hard I'm riding for Shannon and they were doing yeah. flashbacks and I was like, Oh yeah, she was, that was crazy. a crazy situation then. Oh yeah. That was a crazy situation then. I don't, I think they had this little plan. Lexi had her receipts from Johnny J Tamra thought like, Oh, I'm going to come in and betray someone who is my best friend Literally and best tell friend. all of her secrets that she confided to me in and make it look like she's a horrible human e a being trying to out her possible alcohol addiction that I'm going to coin a term for it. Even though she might not have even done that yet. Even though she was one of my, like what Tamra's doing is so gross. It's dark. It's so gross. It's so sick. Why she thinks that she needs to be the one to call her former best friend out on one of the darkest moments of her life. On national television. On national television. Even if, even if she thinks that Shannon is lying about her alcohol abuse. Even if she thinks that Shannon has a problem. Mm -hmm. If that was one of my best friends, former best friends. If that was one of your former best friends, she did nothing to ultimately betray you. No, I know. That's what's so weird is that Shannon hasn't done anything directly to Tamara. To, 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 to like. Be... It feels like Tamara just thought like, oh, I'm going to. She It was like she saw the backlash online about like no DUI is acceptable. Like you guys have money. Take an Uber. Like you could have killed someone. And she got yeah. a pile on her horse and was like, oh, this is. This is how the people feel. Well, I'm going to drill it in now, but she's doing it in such a way that's so, what you said, gross, that people are not responding well to her doing it. No. And she let her friend out there to dry when she I, was going through such a hard time and not only let her friend out there to dry, her friend broke up with this man and then she befriends the new girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who the new girlfriend who at one point was even trying to sue you on what planet? I thought she, did what, sue her. she did sue her on what planet is this? Is this how you approach friendships? And she's like, Oh, it's so funny. Alexis Bellino. I never thought I'd be in your house. Yeah. No it, kidding. When she's at her house, she's if you're going to go to Alexis's house, maybe Talk about all the other women. Don't talk about Shannon there. Like, and then Jesus, like Emily, your girl, Emily was the VIP of this episode for me. Like when she, 100%. when they're at that dinner. Thank God someone and, called her out. And she's like, cause I think Jesus Jug says something like, I want to get to know Shannon. I want to like Shannon. And Emily's yep. like, okay, so you want to like her, but you're showing up with literal receipts. receipts. Like, no, both things cannot exist. Like that's not true at all. And that's the thing about Emily that I've always like, she will always, I always, she's always keeping it real. Mm -hmm. And she always has, she's not worried about being friends with anyone. She's not worried about trying to impress people. She's not trying to play size. She just is who she is. And in that moment, it's what she said. Someone needed to say, someone needed to say like, Alexa, uh, stop your BS. No one believes what's going on. Um, this this whole was a mess. I just, I so mean spirited towards Shannon. And for the first Vicky sitting there being like, you can have a drink. Why? Okay. Vicky came in obviously to have Shannon's yeah. back and Shannon felt like she needed that fair. She felt like she was walking into the lion's den. And with yeah. Tamara, when Tamara's voice is so loud and so aggressive, I would feel I would need that that support to someone there to have my back. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if I was Shannon too, I also would have walked out because there's no stopping yeah. Tamara when she gets on a thought, even yeah. if it's wrong. 
also, even if Tamara had valid points, the way she's approaching this mm -hmm. with, I just cannot stop saying the way she's approaching it with someone she used to call her best friend. What does mm -hmm. she do to her enemies if this is what she does to people that Oof. are her friends? I don't want to know. It It's so sickening. And to out someone's possible issue. Also, to befriend someone like... Alexis doesn't, or Lexi, it's not like she's all that in a bag of chips anyway. Like, she sucks. Like, this is who you want to, like, side with in this moment. Like, fine, be pissed at Shannon, but, like, this is the route you're choosing. This is the direction. When they're sitting there, something that I really found, I was just like, oh, my God, this is giving pick-me energy, was Emily has her new ring. Oh, yeah. Here at oh, the yeah. dinner. And Alexis grabs her and is like, what? And like, is so animated. And it was just giving like, so desperate to be Emily's friend that it was like embarrassed. I had like secondhand embarrassment for Lexi. And his reaction was everything. She's like, yeah, it's a ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think it's Emily was feeling what I was feeling. Yeah. That like, moment. what are you okay, doing bro, desperate right now? Like, let's what are you doing? It Let's take it down a notch. And I think also seeing, we're starting to see Gina playing this both sides of the Katie and Heather mm -hmm. situation. And I'm a little confused here. Like, it's not that but, I'm confused in this situation. I guess I'm just not understanding. Like, is it that serious? I guess for Heather, like, Heather's like, I know. This Heather's is where broke. you're talking about. Like, when you said it last week about the social suicide. Is that what you said? Social, yeah. social suicide. Um, that's exactly what this is. And it's almost as if Gina knows and wants to be a part of that. Whereas I love that Emily's like, I, I ain't the one espresso yeah, yeah, yeah. martini, please. Yeah. Espresso, thank you. Like I'm not the one. And yeah. what? I'm trying to, I no. <laughs> I just, it's, I really love Gina, but when they uh -huh. cut, to that video of her looking like the Long Island spiritual medium with that hair and that outfit. Wait, in the confessional? Yes, in the confessional. And and her talking about how she rides for Heather and her and Heather are really good friends. Because they're both technically from Long Island. But Katie saying, like, I wish you would have given me the heads up. Yeah. But I don't know. Um, I just feel like this is a nothing burger, this whole situation. I'm that so focused situation, on the but Shannon and Tamara. Yeah, right? I don't think it's going to be a nothing burger because when Heather Dubro gets to you, you're 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 screwed. And it can you can tell it continues to go because I, I saw the preview and it's yeah, and Heather having another confrontation about it. Heather is not going to let this go. This is going to be like Teresa and um, Margaret. Like she will not Got let it. this go. She won't okay. let this go. And she'll find ways to do the dig or find ways to like X her yeah. out of her. Yeah. How about Lexi saying, oh, you didn't invite me um, to your party to Katie. I thought Katie handled that. Perfect. Did she? No, I thought she asked Tamara about it. No, she said it right to Katie. Like, oh, oh what was your reasoning in that? Or and then Katie also mean? Katie said, like, I just wanted Tamara or I just wanted Shannon to be able to like have a breath. Enjoy herself. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, How could you not understand that? that? Well, the other and the subtext of that is Shannon is a full time housewife and you are part time. Yeah. And she's gunning. <laughs> That's why she's gunning for full time. I have my receipts and Shannon gives us a nugget here that we don't know if we're ever going to be able to see. And this is where you want Shannon to like play the game smart, but she's so afraid. Like this $75,000 lawsuit and Tamara is putting that out also on air. Like she knows how hurt her friend must be from a relationship. She was just in for three years. He's now trying to sue her. And Tamara's an animal. animal. I'm like, okay. So let's talk about this lawsuit with John. Jackson yeah. Real quick. Okay. So 65,000, 75,000. Like if she didn't sign a contract, and she was under the assumption that it was a gift. Right. Is there a lawsuit even? Like, I understand that maybe he would want his money back, but is there a legal, like, an actual lawsuit? This is where we always say we need to know. 
Like, this is where we need a lawyer because I don't know the answer to that. Like gifts and relationships, who knows how many, like, could you take back every present you've ever but given also, like, to your, I've let, like, if you lend a friend money, which I've had, I've done in the past, like there's part of you that when you put it out there, depending you on expect who, like, to never get it back. Kinda. That's what you say. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing that, and I definitely don't have, like I can't go to court with that. Like I no. don't have like, any kind of legal rem ramifications to get it but, back. And that's what Shannon's saying too. Like I gave him so much money in the beginning. I gave him so much money and here he is coming. I just don't know why he's trying to do this to her. And I'm wondering, is it coming from Lexi? And then you hear Shannon say, I can't, I cannot keep calling her Lexi. Then you hear Shannon say, John is coaching Alexis. John is coaching her. He's coaching her. And I'm like, what does this mean? Because she's breadcrumbing us with this comment. And she's like, if I could say what I wanted. And the producer gets her in the confessional and says, like, what are you trying to say about jo mm -hmm. John Jansen? And she's like, well, if I want to get sued, then I could, then I could say this. And there's something she's not saying, and we're all very curious. And it's weird that her friend, Tamara Judge, former friend, I hope Shannon never talks to her again because she she doesn't deserve it. No, I agree. I totally yeah. agree. This was such a messy episode, and I think people are coming for Tamara as they should. And not that Shannon has always been, you know, Shannon's been a pain in the butt and we've all could see that. And there's been a lot of things, but I still just think like, if you've chosen to be her friend, then you should never reveal some of things that happened mm -hmm. in confidence. I just, I agree. it says a lot about who you are. Absolutely. Should we do I mean, we saw this. Yeah. yeah I mean, but like, that's what we saw with Lala and Katie last season on Vanderpump yeah. Rules. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Katie thought some of those conversations were to a friend, not filming, not that they were to be aired out while filming and held against her. And these are the, like, when you made a joke before, like, oh, I think you'd be great at reality TV. Like, if people did this stuff to me, mm -hmm. I would physically hurt them. Hmm. Because so it's away. such a betrayal. Yeah. I just get right, Danielle. Let's get into uh, that's great. Let's get into Jersey then. Speaking of, let's get in. I was singing a lot about Danielle as I rewatched earlier, and and she says in the in the rewatch in the off the rails episode, she says like I regret that I didn't kill her, <laughs> and Jen Fessler is pushing back saying, Oh, I don't think you mean that. I don't think you mean that. I don't think you mean that. And we all know that Danielle Cabral does not mean that. But what Danielle Cabral means is that she rides hard for the people she loves. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think I really love her because I can relate to that. Like if mm -hmm. you say something about someone I love and care about, like I. You're coming. I'm that. coming. I'm mm -hmm. coming. My husband. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. That <laughs> yeah. You hear that? Um, Anywho, let's, yeah. yeah. So let's get into some of this meth mess. I would say, I just want to start off by saying like, even, so they're doing the rewatch, but there's this moment that this was before the rewatch even happened that Andy Cohen was on his radio Andy show mm. and said that he thinks the darkest moment in real Housewives of New Jersey history is when Louis said, I hope your son suffers. And I am dying to know how Teresa feels about that comment. Well, we dying. saw it. We saw it in this episode. No, oh, like, that Andy said that. Because mm. they've always had like a pretty good relationship. Those two. Yeah, but Andy's called Teresa out before at the reunions and stuff. But she won't see this. It's the same way she didn't see the Marge stuff. She just doesn't see it. And just how we saw her with Jackie, like, I know that it wasn't you. It was be because I, she oh, sees what she, she Okay. You know what? Let's get, yeah, let's get into this rewatch. The one I didn't thing, know this was happening, by the way. Oh, this was all over the, I the didn't box. Know it was, I didn't know, 
I didn't know. I thought last week we were done. My dog's looking at me like, oh, bitch, let's go out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought last week we were done. Like I could wash my hands. I was like, cool. I'm done with Jennifer Aiden. Like, this is great. I love this for me. A couple of days goes by and then I just saw it all. Like it was like after Sunday night and I kept seeing stuff. I was like, oh man. It was like, remember you have another test. Oh, it was okay. Awful. <laughs> you, I love how triggered you are by them. I um, <laughs> I was the thing that I wanted to say last week that I didn't say was all this hype that Andy said, when you watch the last episode, you'll know why there's not a reunion. I watched the last episode and I don't know why there's not a reunion. It didn't feel like this last supper feeling that like the drama that it was made out to sound like, yeah, it was dramatic, but it still didn't feel like, like, this couldn't be a sit down in a reunion. It didn't feel as dramatic as he made it sound like it was going to be. I think what he meant by it though, was not so much that it was dramatic. It was just so clear that like, there's nowhere to go. So like, let's yeah. not waste production That's money. True. Let's not all sit in a room for yeah. six hours in a freezing cold room and have to get lunch catered. Like, I think it was kind of just like, this is a wash. Like yeah. this is dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's all and then, and honestly, with watching this, you know that nothing would have it would have just no. been the same back and forth, the same back and forth. So, you wrote on our outline. We have to talk about Louis talking about the thongs. What the fuck, man? It's so weird. It's so weird. Ah, I can't. If my okay. dad, <laughs> even if my dad said the word thong to oh me, uh, the thought of my dad saying the word thong, like my 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 hair is on the back like, of my they're a step parent so it's like not but like i also I think that's worse like, that's almost worse like ooh, like i don't want you to like be thinking about my body in any like in, you don't know like, like i wear underwear that's it you don't talk yeah. about it yeah like you. Just oh. oh my god i used to hide my bras as a kid because i didn't want my dad to see my yeah. bras in the wash Oh my god, the idea of like leaving it in the bathroom even like, <gasps> like oh never. my god. Or never. like are your tampons like or like oh. I used to hide them. They would never be like my actual box. They would be in my room, like in the back of a <laughs> closet. A and, right. <laughs> this is like save. I know. It's yeah. the like know, it just so is cringe. so skeevy. And we saw how like even the girls aren't like we so weirded out by this like is gabriella in michigan thinking what the fuck man well you saw juicy joe came out with a comment saying that sure Louis, that and everyone's saying that gia runs his account and without a doubt there was way too much punctuation and the spelling was way on point for and us to even words. say too many in words general. too many for words us to think so that juicy joe he, he doesn't know how to post a statement. No offense to you, but you don't even know how to put to like, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. don't even know how to get like a black background and white writing. You think Juicy Joe knows how to do it? Exactly. So no offense. No offense. Anyhow, um, so, so they put us in there. Blonde of you. To be yeah. Like, like the you know like when she's like eh, it doesn't matter actually just. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so they separate them in these rooms and. All of us are like, where's Dolo going to go? And where's Messy Fessy going to go? And then they show us where they're all going. Um, and they start watching. And I think the first thing that happens is um, Jen Fessler is, shows up late. And Danielle go, went right for her. Um, and yeah. I kind of loved it. Because yeah, she said... Jen Fessler said I was wrong for sticking up for Jen Aiden. And it was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. That was I wasn't great expecting that. Was that. Very, I was from Jen. Or, yeah, from, I don't want to even know why they call her Messy Fessy. She ain't that messy. I like she's it. Like, I'm messy I know. No, I she nice really brain, isn't. Yeah. I know. And her being like, I could not stay in that room. I just had a facelift. That was like, me. When she got up and left, I was like, oh, this has me written all over. I wonder if she's a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's so funny. You said, is Danielle the New Jersey VIP? And I can't believe you're also saying that, but I can't either. she is someone who I don't want to go. Like, I don't want her to go away. I want more of her. I think that that was sort of my thought watching this is 
and over the last couple episodes is like Rachel Fudo doesn't bother me, but she doesn't like I like her, but like I, she, she's not someone I feel like I want to continue to see. Whereas Danielle yeah. has really like, I'm like, oh, I think that she is a lot more to show. Yeah, yeah, life. yeah, for sure. And we want to see Rogers it. And Matt Rogers was on Watch What Happens Live the other night, and he, Andy asked him like straight up, like, where, what are your thoughts on Jersey? And he was like. He's like, I think everything's being blown out of proportion. Like, I don't think we need to do a total cast revamp. I think yeah, we no. need to get rid of Jen, Teresa, and Jackie because they're taking whatever fun we're having out of it. And then if you mm. were to go to the other side and you have the rest of the women, they are having fun and they are fun. And I was like, oh, he's so right. Like, it only gets dark when those three come into the mix. But if you leave Marge, Melissa... Danielle, Jen Fessler, Delor like you have them together and it's totally chill and fine. And I'm sure Even that they could have smaller drama, like pettier drama without this big dark cloud over it, you know? Like I it think feels they still make good TV. Yeah. And and the dark cloud feels so I mean, you know, Louie making the comments about um Marge's son. And when that happened in this episode, mm -hmm. Dolo calling out Teresa. Teresa couldn't even hear it. Mm -hmm. Teresa couldn't even hear it. She's like, my kids were, my kids were upset. My yeah. kids were affected. It's not always about you. And yeah. then they start also, going. Her kids were affected by your, by their dad, frankly. And by you. So like you, you all made about bad decisions. Me. It's just, and then like Teresa can take no, no accountability. Know, okay. so, she just repeats back the same thing. That said it her, my kids there, are when they're sitting there and they're like, Jen Aiden's like, they just don't take accountability. And like Teresa and Jen are shaking their heads. I'm like, oh, the delusion is so real. It's it so was, real. Can you imagine that, being that delusional? Like the life I live, it would be I <laughs> it and the thing that I think was also funny was like not funny, but like fucked up was that Jen uh, is talking about like, oh, look at her extensions. Oh, look at her this. Oh, look at her that, blah, blah, blah. Like, <sighs> what do you have to say other than that? Other than just like talking-ish about, she doesn't. It, it gets- And the way it, that they like kind of mocked the money, like they want, like they come into my house, like she didn't talk about Danielle. She comes oh, into yeah. my house and wants all this. And it's like, all this like, these- oversized homes and glitz and glam like danielle could live without she's in a loving relationship and she's got two young kids that adore her like i'm sure i think fine. it's so funny that they took danielle's compliments to them yes and as her off. wanting their lives by her yeah. being like oh i love that vase on your counter i want that like i go to my now. Right. I go like to my friend's kids. houses and I'm like, oh my God, I love your vase. I love your couch. I love your pillow. Where'd you get that? They take that and they're like, she, yeah, she wants my life. Also, I, like, what else are you going to say when you walk into a monstrosity of a house like that? Like you're going to compliment are too big that like when you walk in, you don't really have anything else other to say, except for like, wow, it's so big and nice in here. Like what? I just, it's so interesting that that's how they took her compliment i know of, because they oh they want my life day. it's insane they so then they talk everything. about they get to the scene where it's all coming out about jackie being the one to do this and mm -hmm. Teresa's like no it's not true Teresa's in real life watching the episode where marge is presenting the information and she's like marge you're a liar marge is a liar like will not accept that this information that marge is giving her is actually real and I then yeah, go ahead. Ahead. it just I love was when it's no you go you go you go no because i think you're yeah you go i just the her and jackie saying to each other you know the only reason i did that is because i was upset and she's like i know you only did it to me because i was hurting you mm -hmm. and then melissa being per Melissa saying, I bet you this they're over what there. Like, say. you only said that because I said that. And, the, and Melissa's just mocking them, talking about how this is what they would be saying in the other room. And it's yeah. just, they're doing the back and forth. They're doing yeah. the take side by side about how it's just, come on, gals. Come on. It's so funny that, like, the more pissed off Teresa gets with Melissa, 
for whatever like the the more she the longer she stayed on this trajectory on like yeah. the anti melissa campaign the more we end up liking melissa because melissa's a little bit less phased by the whole thing <laughs> she's kind of like i don't like what do you want lady like she just and it makes <laughs> us kind of feel like okay melissa's clearly the one to side with here because we got a loony bin on this side no but like she's so delusional it's just so Teresa and Jen Aiden, thank God they have each other because other like the delusion is there's no accountability. They talk in circles. Could you imagine what their conversations are like? No. Just and the fact that I would pay to have at least like an ounce of their delusion. Like I think my life yeah, could be nice. Here. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly it would be nice. Like I think, be. you know, la la land, but rainbows and butterflies. To your point, I think we're happy that this we're happy the season's over. What's your prediction of what's gonna be next? And you know what I'm bummed that they didn't show? That they didn't show Jackie walking out and backing up so everyone could see how dumb she looked. I know. Maybe they felt like they had embarrassed her enough already. <laughs> she didn't seem embarrassed. <laughs> crazy so town i know um what is my prediction i kind of think what matt rogers said could be right i think i would like to see more jen fessler for sure i mean marge is like made her. for reality tv dolores i love dolores but i don't know that she needs to stay in this necessarily it's like she's too neutral almost yeah i love like, her but totally i think she's great and all of that. I just don't know if we need to see her on the TV anymore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Jen Fessler and Danielle, I would love to keep seeing. I think Melissa is also great. And Melissa is also going into this sort of like has her first child in college. So she's sort of entering this like next phase of her life. I know she still has two at home, but like these older women can relate to that a little bit. So that'll be, that could be interesting to watch. And if the dynamic between her and Joe changes, I think that there's some stuff there. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. I we'll think a, a pause could be nice. Yeah. With that, New York is coming Oops. back October 1st. They dropped that trailer two days ago yesterday. It's it my looks. birthday. Oh, yay. Uh, Libra season. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, great birthday present because that trailer looked in fire i am excited i'm going to watch it the day after my birthday because you okay. know all the It'll confrontation be... on my birthday <laughs> could <laughs> be, be a too lot. much for one to handle <laughs> you know they usually ease us into the confrontation yeah that's true um but yeah so a lot of things are going to be happening in the fall i feel like we're kind of like at the end of summer season things will be you know picking up in the fall you know what would be nice too is that we record morning after to like we do Wednesday morning. So that means it'll always be right after Roni. Oh, Probably great. The last thing we watch before we record. Lovely. Finally. With it's like working in our favor. <laughs> finally. And so with that, guys, we will be back next week with an all new episode. Just a reminder, our episodes are now dropping on Thursdays. If you don't already follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Bonded by Bravo Pod. Listen to us on Apple Podcast or Spotify at Bonded by Bravo. And we are now, you can catch our full episodes on YouTube on YouTube via her.media um, and just search Bonded by Bravo Pod. We'll be back next week, friends, with an all new episode. Talk to you soon. Bye.